with the presence of the VAG Auto Group increasing every year in the United States, which includes Audi, Volkswagen, Bentley, Lamborghini, and Bugatti, more and more of these vehicles are gonna be coming your way with busted windshields. And if they have a camera, that means you're gonna to have to calibrate it. We're gonna do that next. Today's advanced driver assistance systems can do a lot of different things to help prevent accidents, but they still can't prevent the occasional stone or chip going up into the windshield, as is the case with this Volkswagen behind me. Remember, anytime the glass is damaged and the camera is removed, such as the case of the one behind me, you're going to have to calibrate the front camera. This glass has been replaced, has been also replaced with factory glass. That is very important to remember. Some aftermarket glass companies could give you a problem with the calibration. We're going to go ahead and calibrate the front camera using our DOS 3000 and our ADOS link. First thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is get into diagnostics. My VCI is already hooked up to the DLC under the dash. Let's go ahead and get into diagnostics. We're gonna auto ID the VIN. As in the case with any calibration that you're going to perform, a pre and post scan is necessary to see that you have any DTCs that could hinder or prohibit you from calibrating the glass. Let's go ahead and get into our pre-scan first. Select read DTCs. We're gonna select all of the modules, press continue, and I'm gonna select pre-scan down here. I'll have a post scan after I'm done with all of my calibration. Right now our ADOS link is gonna go through all of the modules to see if there's any DTCs in this vehicle that could cause us a problem or a current problem with the camera after it was removed and installed you'll see that there is quite a bit of modules on here. 385 that is going through right now. So we won't make you watch all of that. And again, the power of editing will make this seem like it goes like no time at all. Our pre-scan has completed and it's in the saved reports file now on my ADOS link, which will create and generate a report for later on after we're all done. I did take a quick scroll through here. I don't have any DTCs related to the camera installation, which means I'm good to go. We're gonna back out and go into our ADOS calibrations. We have a couple options here, the radar, camera, surround view, and rear facing camera as well, are the four choices that we're allowed to have on this vehicle. We're gonna select the front facing camera, and we're gonna go through that procedure. I'll walk you step by step so you know exactly how to do it if one of these vehicles comes into your shop. Okay, just a warning that pops up, making sure that you're being careful because any special test could render the vehicle inoperative. We won't do that today. We're not gonna make it inoperative. We're gonna actually get it to work here. Get that camera working just the way it should. So here's the equipment that we're gonna need. You'll see I have the DOS 3000 rack in front of me. We're gonna use a couple special boards here. We're gonna use our wheel clamps um, and we'll also be using a tape measure. So we'll get into that. We'll press continue on this. The next thing that it shows is again, the reason we're doing this is this is going to adjust the warning camera um, and we'll go ahead and press continue on this. Don't press skip unless you've done this before. I'm gonna press continue and walk you through step by step. If you press skip, it kind of takes away all of these special steps and I'm sure the reason you're watching this is so that I can do this. So again, we're gonna perform the calibration anytime the camera was replaced, when the windshield has been replaced or repaired, um, when a DTC is present, or now you're seeing alignments or suspension work has been done as well. Cause that will affect the way that the actual camera sits on the vehicle. So that's another reason that you might wanna have to do this. Your preconditions, we talk about these every time we do these videos, they're no different any other time. Level surface, good lighting, correct tire size, recommended pressure in the tires as well. All of these things, fuel tank is full. No unnecessary weight in the vehicle um, and good lighting. These are all things that are very important to do these things correctly. We're gonna do the guided tour summary. You'll see we need a little bit of space here in the front of the vehicle. And the first thing that we're gonna do is hook up our cameras and get started with what it's gonna ask us to do now with our wheel clamps.
All right, our cameras are hooked up right now. And the distance that says 1500 millimeters, that is factory specification. It came up automatically. I don't need to change that. So I'm gonna press done and continue. So next thing we're gonna do is install our wheel clamps in the position that it's asking, left front wheel, right rear wheel to start with. Let's go ahead and get these installed. Remember when you're installing these, you have a bubble meter or a bubble level on top, try and get that centered. Make sure your boards are straight up and down so the cameras can read them. Let's go ahead and press continue now that I've got these installed on our vehicle. You can see the cameras right here are looking for the targets. Make sure that it is illuminated correctly, that the cameras can see these. You want to have good vision on these, no weird shadows or extra lighting causing a problem that the cameras can't see these correctly. And right now I can see those correctly. We're going to press continue. Next thing it's having me do is go ahead and take that left front and move it back to the left rear now. It's doing a couple measurements is really what it's doing right now, making sure our distance is set. Now it's time to move our entire DOS 3000 rack into the position highlighted here on the screen. So I'm gonna move that and get that lined up. It can be a little tricky sometimes. These, are, these machines are sensitive and so be patient with trying to line these up. This is one of the great things about the DOS 3000 and the ADOS link though. I'm not using tape measure to get my 1500 millimeters that I need. The camera system and the targets will put me exactly where I need to be. No guesswork. It's a little difficult to get it lined up, but that's exactly what we want because the precision of this machine is absolutely incredible. I've got it lined up where I need to be right now. I'm in the green. I can press continue now and it's going to tell me probably to lock this in place, which I'm going to do now. Get the brakes back on here and kind of give this a little bit more of a tweak to put it back exactly where it wants to be. We've got our DOS 3000 in the required position. Let's go ahead and press continue. We've got our brake secured. All right, next thing we're gonna do is install our target boards. We're gonna use a target board that's shown here on the image of the ADOS link. We're gonna attach it using board hangers number one in position A, which is on the side of the DOS 3000 rack. We're gonna center that out and we'll lock it into place. Target board is marked, so it's easy to find and how to center this. And we'll slide down our clamp, lock that into place once I have it centered. Our board's set up, we're gonna go ahead and press continue. Next thing we're gonna do is make sure that our DOS 3000 rack is level using our bubble level up here, this in the number two position, and we'll turn this till we get that exactly where we want it to be. Looks good there, we'll go ahead and press continue. At this point, it's ready to begin calibration, so it's asking us to remove our USB cable and our cameras and step away from the calibration area. We'll press continue. Here's another thing that's a little unique with the actual Volkswagen itself, is that if it has suspension level control, which with this one does, we're gonna put it in the normal position. There's a switch inside the vehicle. I'm gonna make sure that it's set to the comfort 
because there's a couple different modes on these with these suspensions. So I'm gonna go in there real quick and make sure it's set to comfort before I begin the calibration. I got to set to the comfort mode now. Let's make sure to wait until the vehicle is completely adjusted to normal suspension level. If it did change, you might want to give it a minute. This one seemed to have stayed right where it was. We'll press continue. Calibration is in progress right now. And then it said, no, hold on, wait a second. We need something else. So this is a little bit unique also to the VAG group. Now we're going to actually have to get the ride height of the vehicle. We're gonna get the distance of the ride height for left and rear. Um, I like to split the wheel right in half and I'll do it right from the arch down to the ground. And then we'll enter those numbers in next. You're gonna see I split the wheel right in half, go up to the top of the arch. I got 71 on this one. It's a good deal. It's, and don't assume that the rear is the same height. Don't assume that. Because surprisingly on this vehicle, the rear ride height is 73. I'm gonna check the other side to verify that as well. Again, suspension being level is extremely important on these vehicles. 73 as well. And if everything goes as planned, this one will be 71. Remember those numbers, because we're gonna enter them next. And that's a 71. I'm gonna enter that in my tablet now. Both fronts were 71, both rears were 73. We'll press continue and go ahead and enter these right here. Ride heights are entered, let's go ahead and press continue. I'm gonna ask you if these values are correct. And the calibration was successfully completed. Our report was saved also to our ADOS link, which we can attach to our report. Last thing that we're gonna to wanna to do right now is cycle the ignition. We're gonna do that. We cycled our ignition from off to on. We'll press continue. And it kicks us back out into our main ADOS screen. At this point, we have successfully calibrated the windshield camera. As with any ADOS calibration you do, the next step that you need to do is test drive the vehicle and verify the system is operating as designed before you return it to the customer. Once you've test drove that vehicle and verified everything's working, go ahead and do your post scan, generate that report that shows pre, the actual calibration, and the post scan that you can save, print off, and email to your customer showing that the procedure was done correctly. I'm gonna go test drive this, make sure it's good. I have a feeling it will be. Thanks for watching. Make sure anytime you have any other ADOS procedures that you wanna do, take a look at the Hunter YouTube page for a lot more of these types of videos that's gonna show you how to do these procedures step by step. Thanks for watching.